Welcome to the NJIT Website and Math Podcast. My name is Stephanie. Today I will be covering set notation. To specify a set, we have two particular methods. The first method is known as the roster method. This method lists out all the particular numbers within a set. This is an example of the roster method. We've listed out every single number that exists within a set. Sometimes, though, it's helpful to list this set in terms of another variable. This is known as a set builder notation. For example, In this particular method, we listed the sets found in number 1 up here as in terms of this new x variable. And this is read as the set of all x, this little bar means such that. So the set of all x such that x is a natural number less than 6. So sometimes it's useful to use the roster method and write out all the numbers, and sometimes it's better to use the set builder notation and list your set in terms of a variable. Sometimes in a set, we have conditions that can't be met. Here's an example. In this particular situation, we're asked to find a set. We're asked to find an x value that exists in this x set, where x is less than 2 and x is greater than 7. Now, there is no number that is less than 2 and greater than 7. Therefore, this set is known as an empty set. No number exists. This symbol here means an empty set. There is no solution to this answer. Now sometimes it's useful to compare two different sets. So here's an example. Let's say A is equal to the set. And we'll say B is equal to this set. Now we can compare these two sets using different properties. The first thing we can look at is a union of two sets. A union of two sets is denoted like this. This u, this upright u, means the union of the two sets. So what does that mean? It means that in these two sets, find a set Given these two sets, A and B, find a set that exists that contains both A and B. So if you're asked to find the union of A and B, A union of B is equal to the numbers that exist in both sets. So we list every single number in both sets. As you can see, this answer incorporates both values from A and B into one answer. That's what this union is asking for. Now there's one other useful information, piece of information, and it's called the intersection. This number is listed, or this value, is represented like this with an upside down U. Now what does this mean? Well, a union was when we combined both sets. We just combine all of the sets from A and all of B. Now an intersection asks for what points do we have in common. 
So if we look at A and we look at B, we notice they both have a negative 2, they both have a 0, and they both have a positive 2. Therefore, the, the intersection of A and B equals negative 2, 0, 2. So just to repeat, a union incorporates numbers that exist in both A and B. It's all numbers, any number that exists in A or B. The intersection, this number, this set, the numbers have to exist in both sets. So negative 2 exists in both sets, 0 exists in both sets, and 2 exists. So here's another practice problem. Let's say that a is equal to negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 3. And b is equal to negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. Now, we are asked to find this. What does this represent exactly? This represents to find the union of A and B, which means the numbers that exist in both A and B. That means the answer to this problem will be all the numbers in the set. So we have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now, if we are asked, I'm just going to move up here, let's get more room. Now, if we're asked to find the intersection of A and B, well, what does that equal? Remember, the intersection, the numbers must be included in both A and B. Let's see, we have 0 that includes in, that is included in both. 0 seems to be the only number, so this answer is 0. Keep in mind this 0 is different from an empty set. Empty set means absolutely no numbers exist. 0 is a number. So thank you for visiting NJIT website. If you need further assistance, stop by the CAPE in Kupriyan Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.